To understand Jan van Eyck's art, we have to go back to the Hundred Year War. The Hundred Year War was a long fight between the England Kingdom and the France Kingdom for the French throne. The gruesome battle lasted from 1337 to 1453. Because of the war, people developed the deadly plague disease. The plague, also known as the Black Death, was one of the biggest killers of the Middle Ages of Europe in the 14th and 15th century. The plague was a bacteria that was carried by fleas, mostly common in France. It had arrived in Europe by 1348. It had killed up to 30 to 50 percent of the population. The virus was spreading all over Europe from Italy, France, Germany, England, and Spain. It took more than 80 years to recover Europe's population. However, after the plague, new opportunities started to bloom in Flanders. The printing press was invented. Northern European scholars and artists began making their own cultural contributions, which became known as the Northern Renaissance. The printing press had a historic effect on European development. Art, religion, and literature were introduced to the people. The people who survived the plague became merchants. Trade goods helped Europe economy grow. Trades from Asia transferred into Europe. Items such as luxury furniture, gold, and fruit came through Italian ports. As an outcome, merchant families grew rich and powerful. Self-portraits were a great way to show off your wealth. The master of painting self-portraits in Flanders was John Van Eyck. John Van Eyck is a Flemish painter, the creator of new art in the 15th century. What made John Van Eyck popular was his true-to-life style painting. He uses vivid oil colors, particular detail, accurate textures, and the illusion of three-dimensional spaces on a two-dimensional surface. An example of John Van Eyck's realistic painting is the Ghent altarpiece. He uses rich colors that gives us the illusion of the real world. This is also known as supreme art. This international elegant style demonstrates the difference between noble and ordinary people. Another example of noble people would be the Arnolfini portrait. The Arnolfini portrait was created by John Van Eyck. It is a self-portrait of Giovanni and Giovanna Arnolfini. I believe this portrays wealth, power, and marriage. The Arnolfini portrait is well organized. It has symmetrical balance. The woman's side corresponds to the man's side. John Van Eyck uses rich complementary color scheme such as the red furniture and the green dress. He is also great in showing stimulated texture, such as the woman's veil, fur, and broom. The implied lines in the woman's and man's glands are in different direction. There is a lot of repetition of circular shape, such as the window patterns, the mirror, and the oranges. Shading also gives the portrait the illusion of deepness. Giovanni and Giovanna Arnolfini suggest the symbol of gender roles, as the woman is standing next to the bed as the housewife, and the husband stands next to the window as the money maker. Remember, Giovanni was a wealthy merchant in Bruges. As you can see, Giovanna looks at him directly. On the other side, Giovanni is looking at the audience with his hand raised, showing that he has power and taking oath in their marriage. You can tell that he is the dominant one in the relationship. Based on Flemish marriage customs, 
It is possible that Giovanna did not have any power or control on who she would marry. Brides are usually much younger than grooms. Women as young as 14 are often married to men in their 30s, partially to ensure their bride's virginity. Marriage customs are arranged for both sides of the family to boost their financial fortunes. Another symbol of power of the husband over the wife is when the groom takes off his shoes. In the Middle Ages, it was quite usual for the man to give his future bride his clogs. As you can see, Giovanni gave Giovanna his clogs, as to show that he was the dominant one in the marriage. On the lower half of this painting, you can see a brown furry dog staring at the viewer. Dogs in painting usually indicates loyalty and companion. It also shows how much money you have. You can understand why John Van Eyck included the dog in the portrait. It is a reflection of their marriage, of having loyalty and companion in their lives. Consuming oranges in your household are another way of showing off your wealth. In Bruges, oranges are rare and expensive because they are imported. The oranges have many health benefits and doctors recommend to have in your diet. As I mentioned before, the plague was a dangerous disease, and oranges was a great way to fight off disease. Another example of how Giovanni and Giovanna reflect wealth was their exotic furniture, such as their luxury pattern woven rug. Woven wool was an increasing worldwide market in luxury goods. Giovanna died in 1433, a year before the painting is dated. It is possible that the portrait is not a wedding photo, but honoring her because she died. The mirror is an age-old symbol of death. The portrait combines death and time. The border of the mirror displays 10 tiny illustrations of suffering, death, and the rebirth of Christ. If you look closely, you can see the only lit candle in the chandelier. This represents the embody of Christ. The one lit candle can also suggest an all-seeing eye of God. It has been proposed that this is a memorial portrait. The lit candle represents the living man while the burnout stubs the right is a metaphor for decrease Giovanna. Above the mirror, you can see John Van Eyck's Latin signature that translates as John Van Eyck was here, 1434. I believe this is important back then to capture precious moments and to have a family record, to show off their life legacy in the world forever in art. I created my own artwork inspired by John Van Eyck's Arnefini portrait. To begin, the oranges symbolize wealth and health. Me and my partner are not married, but we hold hands to express support, connection, and trust. The lit candle is the light in the darkness in life, and to be grateful for life and have hope. John Van Eyck on her Feeney portrait shows wealth, power, and marriage. But I think John Van Eyck's message is also to keep in record of the important events and people in our lives. Like today, we like to capture pictures of ceremonies, birthdays, parties, marriages, and holidays because they matter in our lives.